Good morning. It's such a privilege to be bringing a devotion to you today. And I want to start in the book of Matthew, chapter 14. This is a story from Jesus's life. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, Jesus said, and he directed the people to sit on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, beside women and children. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. And I've got six lessons that I want to give to you in six minutes, starting right now. The first lesson is Jesus wanted some downtime. He wanted his own space. And this is a great thing. We all need that time to recharge our batteries, to pray. I like to have a bath and read a book. Maybe you sit in a garden. Maybe you watch a film. Whatever it is, we all need to do these things to keep our minds healthy. Have some downtime. The second lesson, Jesus was on his way to have some downtime and instead he was overcome with compassion to help these people. Who likes to be interrupted? Not me at all. My son Roman, who's 18 months old, he does this constantly. He's always interrupting me at the most inconvenient times. When was the last time that your plans were derailed because you stopped to help someone in need? And if you can't remember, ask yourself why. Are you making yourself available to those in need? Are you aware of the needs of those around you? Think about who you know that might need you to reach out to them today through text or a call. Let your day be interrupted. I believe we always need to err towards compassion. We say and we believe for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, but then we can forget to act out that love and compassion to those around us. So let your day be interrupted. Be filled with compassion today. The third lesson is the disciples, while they're observing this, they're not overwhelmed with compassion. <laughs> they're actually not touched at all, it seems, because they just want to move on. Jesus, we've done our thing here. Let's just go. We all know people who have done this, and we've probably all been this person at some point as well. To be so focused on the end goal and the plan that we forget to be gracious along the way. And we also know that there's a general disconnect that can happen in the world. We can hear of people struggling in poverty in another country and hear of wars and quickly forget. We hear of people dying in this country every day of COVID-19, but I don't know about you, sometimes I can feel disconnected from that. Compassion has the word passion in it. It's when we feel a passion for the situation that we feel compassion. And I think sometimes we don't experience compassion because we're not in the situation firsthand. So what do you do when you don't actually feel compassionate? I believe we can pray. We can ask God to show us ways to be compassionate, even from afar, even if we're geographically so far away from the situations or we're not able to be in the situations. I believe that when we pray, God will give us opportunities to help. And this is a whole church call to help. So it's not just down to you to do something, but I believe we all need to err on the side of compassion. The fourth lesson is, the disciples were actually worried that they wouldn't have enough to share and then be left with nothing in the end for themselves. I think this is a really common thing for us to feel. If I help freely, how do I make sure there's enough for me at the end? And this applies to giving our money, our time, our energy. We can sometimes worry that we're giving too much and we're not going to be left with anything. And there's a great verse in Proverbs that just clears this up. I think Proverbs 11 verse 24. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. 
A generous person will prosper and whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. This verse is basically saying, if you give freely, you will gain even more. And withholding these things will make you love them. This money, this time, this energy, it will make you love those things more than you love others and more than you love to see others flourish. And that can be a dangerous thing. I really believe that we're called to be generous and to refresh others and to just trust God to refresh us as we do that. And that leads me on to the fifth lesson. Jesus was so calm as the disciples said this, and he just showed them that there will always be enough for those who put others first. Even in the disciples' panic, Jesus shows them, you will have more than enough. There were 12 baskets left, 12. That's not just a little bit too much. That is more than enough, over and beyond. There's a great verse in Matthew where Jesus says, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Aren't you much more valuable than they are? I think this comes down to trust. Do you trust that if you give God your 100%, he will give you that extra 40, 50, 80% that you need for yourself? Don't question me on the maths there. There's more than 100%. Jesus was so calm while he told the disciples this. Trust in God. We can learn from that. Even in your panic, even when the people around you are panicking, there is a calmness and a stillness that comes from trusting that God has got it in control and he will give you everything you need. That brings me on to my sixth and final lesson. After all of this had happened, Jesus still had time to go and do his own thing. His day was interrupted and at the end of it, he still went and spent time in solitude. If you help others and after all that you've done, you still have time to do your own thing, why wouldn't you help? Why not make yourself available to those around you, to help them, to offer your services collecting shopping, to send a message or arrange a video call to catch up with people, send a card or some flowers, write a nice post about them on social media, offer all these things and more that are possible in lockdown. So that was six things that we have learned from this story, six lessons in six minutes. Here they are real quick. First one, downtime is good. Second, air towards compassion. Thirdly, pray for opportunities to be more compassionate and act on this. The fourth, if you give freely, you will gain even more. Five, there will always be enough for those who put others first. And six, if you help others, you will actually still have time to do your own thing afterwards. Thank you for listening and comment below with your favourite lesson.